So the net size meant that there were some pretty ingenious devices fitted in there to make it all work in such a small space. Now, your cohort, Tom Eels, talks about the infamous Hobson unit and Frank Foster, uh, who I remember well, sat uh, behind me for many a flight, mentions Cam K, the bane of many a student's life. Now, perhaps you could explain those to the audience. Oh, well, I have to tell you, Nick, I'm not going to get into a <laughs> lesson here on the, on, the, on the Cam K and the Q gearing and the Hobson unit. I, I would like far rather sort of give you, because I'd only probably get myself tied up all these years later. How many years? 35, 40 years later? Uh, what I will say was it, the control systems were, were, were very complex. And part of that was due to the fact that um, when the NAT was converted from a single-seat fighter into a two-seat trader, it was extended. That, of course, affected the CFG and things like that. And, um, and it had an interesting uh, controls down the back end. You know, it had a, a, an all-flying tailplate, basically. Um, the elevators were sort of locked to the tailplate, but you could unlock the elevators. And, and it's all related to, to that. It's, it's related to what speed you're flying at, um, what happens, Cam K, for example, in particular, has a, a definite relationship with the speed of the aircraft. Um, uh, but the gearing and the datum shift as well, when you put the undercarriage down, for example, it, uh, the whole system, it's, it's looking after you. It's looking after you when you're flying it. But if things go wrong, it can screw you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you didn't fall into my trap. What a shame. Um, I, I have a few things in mind uh, particular to the NAT. Now, p perhaps you could just talk about them a little bit, uh, and you might have some of your own. Now, the ejector seat knob, that was a fascinating concept. It was. Um, I, I liked the pollen seat. I actually, you know, I spent my life sitting on Martin Baker seats where you pull the pins out from down there, up there. But I really found the nap very simple. You know, just having that thing behind your neck, if it, if, if it, was, if it was live, it stuck into your neck. But it was very simple just to move it uh, around. Um, the seat was lightweight. Um, the size of the person sitting on the seat was very important. And for example, that's why we, those who were too big to fly the NAT were moved onto the Hunter, um, because um, if you if you if your thigh length was too long for the seat when you ejected, you'd probably break your thighs. And well, like any any ejector seat, the back length is really critical as well. All our, but um, I, I, I enjoyed the NAT seat, and it was a it was a good seat too. It it worked. Um, we did have people fly the NAT. Quite, and it's reflected in the book, people who, quite frankly, were very large people who <laughs> probably knew that they shouldn't be flying the NAT because um, somehow they'd, they'd avoided the anthropometric um, <laughs> people uh, and were flying it. But I know that there's at least one instructor mentioned in the book who sort of said, you know, hmm, if, if, I, if I was ever going to have to eject, I think I was probably going to land it yes, <laughs> somewhere. I, I think that's quite right. Yeah, at, uh, over six foot two and a half, then uh, I had to spend a special day sitting in the net in all my gear with a doctor uh, and a tape measure, making sure that I, in theory, wouldn't leave my legs behind. I, I, found, I found the net really very comfortable. I mean, you know, it was a, I was half the size then than, than I am now. I probably certainly wouldn't get into it now. Um, but um, I found it an absolute delight. I mean, it, it, again, it comes out in the book. You, you don't you, you you put the nat on almost. It's it's so such a small aircraft, and you walk up to it and just climb into it and put it on, and Absolutely. off you go. And when yeah. you when you when you take when you run rolling down the runway, you are only just above the runway itself. Your seat is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the undercarriage air brake system that was fascinating. Yeah. I liked it. Again, I found it very effective. Um, it was one way of cutting down weight um, on the on the aircraft, um, uh, and I thought it was really good. I could see personally, I could see no negatives uh, about it, um, but there were. We did have one or two um, occasions when the 
student or even in the instructor had landed, thought he'd had the undercarriage down, obviously hadn't checked three greens properly, but actually landed on the air brake. Right. Perhaps you could explain to the audience who might not be familiar what that system was. It was the, the undercarriage, well when you put the undercarriage down, two main wheels, one nose wheel, down it comes and you go from three reds, it says it's on its way down, and when you've got three greens you know the undercarriage is stuck down and you can land. But the air brake was a part of the undercarriage, the undercarriage doors in front of the, the, the main wheels. Um, and when you're flying normally, you just, you just operate the, the air brakes, stick the air brakes out, and the, um, the undercarriage, the, all that would happen would be the doors would open. And, and that was your air brake. Um, and very clever, really. It was very clever. Yeah. But the main reason for that was weight saving. Mm, absolutely. The canopy was huge on it, wasn't it? Game. Love the canopy. It was so, so nice to sit in an aircraft with a huge canopy, where the, the, the lookout was fantastic. The visibility, you know, the view, it was, I mean, we've all flown our later aircraft, the Phantom, for example. We used to look at F-16s and F-15s. Oh, and, with and, jealousy. And, and, the, <laughs> and the, the canopy in those aircraft, I think, if only. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Uh, the slipper tanks were an interesting thing, and we always seem to be short of fuel in the NAT. I, I, that's interesting. I've heard that comment. I, I, yes, I thought, you, but you're moving around the sky pretty quickly, mm. and you could do a lot in, in, a, in a 50 minute. I think our average sortie length was about 50 minutes. If we were doing Navix, it's high, low, high. You, got, you can get one hour five out of it, about that. Uh, but you could, I used to find that was sufficient time to do what you you want to do. I mean, high, low, high Navix, we could go right way up to uh, north of Scotland, come down, low level, back up, high, get in. We're traveling a lot of the time at 420 knots at low level or Mach point turn nine or round about that area at, at high level. So you're shifting around the sky. Yes, it, um, <laughs> for those of, us who, those of us who went on to Lightnings know a lot more about <laughs> fuel than, <laughs> than that. Um, the slipper tanks, yeah, if you didn't have the slipper tanks on, uh, then you've got very short range aircraft. Mm. Um, and the slipper tanks, there's, I've got a little story in, in, in Nat Boys about the slipper tanks. When I was doing a photographic uh, um, task with one of the national newspapers, and um, I got a, uh, one of my slipper tanks uh, showed that it wasn't feeding properly. So I hung around probably just a little bit too long. And um, if, you'd, if a slipper tank didn't feed, for example, then you had to get the aircraft back on the runway, back on the ground, before the fuel level got down to a certain figure. Because you ran out of lateral you control. You ran out of lateral otherwise. control. Yeah, yeah. All I'll say is that on the final approach to uh, <laughs> landing at, at Valley, and I was right on the limit. Wow. I could tell exactly why that limit was there because I was fast running out of, out of control. Wow. Absolutely, golly. Uh, the narrow wheelbase we've mentioned, but it, I mean, it was always easy to tell who was a new student on a nap just by the way they duck waddled down the runway yeah. of takeoff and landing. But uh, once you got the hang of it, it was it was a pretty good system. It worked, and, it the, and, the, and the students um, coped with it admirably, mm. yes. Um, one or two didn't, and one or two, unfortunately, fell by the wayside. And I was always sad to see um, students go. And that was never my, my aim. I always said, in fact, that uh, any students that I have will be the best on the course. I quickly learnt, actually, that that was not going to be the case, because um, you do learn that uh, each student has a different amount of ability. So I changed my, my view on, on that one. but. Um, not too many failed because they couldn't fly the aircraft. Most, 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 not too many didn't go solo. Um, That's true. It was mainly a factor of keeping up with the airplane when yeah. you started doing more. And you know, I think an, an example of how they cope on the runway. I mean, obviously the students when they're flying solo, you know, they, they had different limits from the instructors. Um, but we used to f formations, for example, we're always three ships, and when you got, so you got a student on e each wing um, taking off down the runway very competently you know and that is always an example of me how quickly how quickly they settle down in this and they grow to love it oh i i certainly did um 
Fuse 13. <laughs> that was always a bit of a joke. There are a lot of myths attached to it as well. What was it then? Fuse 13, sort of, well, the Nat had a fantastic rate of roll, as you will remember. Um, Fuse 13 sort of restricted the rate of roll. Um, now, there were, I, I know that the Red Arrows uh, at, uh, at one stage did sort of um, fly without Fuse 13. Um, they inhibited Fuse 13 and that increased their rate of roll. There was, now all this changed basically, there was one, there was one uh, particular sort of uh, display pilot who uh, had also um, removed Fuse 13 and uh, very unfortunately in a roll sort of at an airfield, um, I forget where it was, but the fin came off. Oh Lord, yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I think that's one, the rate of roll was really fast. Um, but I think sort of when, unfortunately, there was that unfortunate accident when the fin came off, really woke people up. Mm. Yeah. Now, returning from a low level sortie often concluded by coming back to Valley down the A5 pass that, and that narrow gap at the inn end yep. over Clean Ogwen. Yep. It was an immensely exhilarating thing to do. Could you perhaps describe it for us? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I quite frankly, the low flying we did was, was just brilliant. We did a lot of it uh, in all, all its forms. And, and Wales was a perfect low flying area. And there were plenty of valleys and things over Wales and lakes and things. But the A5 pass was, as you say, it was special. As I'm talking to you now, I can visualize it sort of coming, coming down, coming, never getting your way about, finding Lake Ogwin, down over Lake Ogwin at uh, 360 knots or whatever speed you were at. And then, and then the real exhilarating bit was at the end where uh, you knew that it was going to go right and it was going to go down into a valley. And you could come down there and really suddenly you, you overbanked and down into the valley like that. It was just an exhilarating experience. It was. Uh, heart stopping the first time you did it as you rolled close to inverted and pulled down to what you thought might be rock. In fact, to find that the valley suddenly blossomed and opened in front of you and you were flying into clear and safe and below the level of the road that used to go around. That, that's exactly right, <laughs> below the level of the road. So it was very, you know, for those, and the, anybody driving down the road when, when um, the gnats were flying, uh, you used to regularly see sort of um, aircraft going down there. And in fact, to this day, there are all sorts of aircraft. It's, I, think, I seem to remember when I was instructing in Valley, it was very much sort of, it was our territory. Um, but it, it's, it's much better known, it became much better known as, as time went on. Absolutely, yeah.